Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. A bonus podcast for myself, Gonzo and Perry Fenwick, or Billy Mitchell as you may know him. We're here to talk a little bit about Perry and a bit about West Ham as well. But before we kick it off, Perry, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm really good. It's very nice to actually speak to you two in person. I watch it virtually every day. Um, I love the show. been a great fan of the show. I don't know, I think just, you two are brilliant presenters. Um, and it's brilliant to have a show. You know, I come home from work every night and it's just like, oh, there's nothing. I want to, you know, you've got to have a fix about where I stand. You have to, you know, and, it, and so therefore, even though I'm not joining in when you're on with that, it's it's those subjects that I'm thinking about. So, very well played. Thank you, mate. Thanks Thank you. Much. I have to agree. TV pickings are a bit slim these days, especially in BBC yeah. One around 8 pm. There's not much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> he, 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 waits, he waits to catch up. He's got it all on playback, Gio. That's what he waits for the weekend. He's got something. <laughs> um, Gonzo, how are you doing? I'm all right. I'm all right. Big, quick rush back from the school run. Strategically parked a motor so I didn't have to do the, the three point turn. Got back here for 3 30. Yep. Happy, mate. You all right? Yeah, I'm good. Would you like to kick off your question? Yeah, I've got. Um, you So let's paint the scene. If you will, Perry. Okay. Or you're Billy. The... No, okay. Yeah, it actually has to be Billy. <laughs> okay. All right, Bill. You're in the pub. Yeah. Propping up the bar. Yeah. Um, in walks Davy Moyes. And he walks up. And he walks up and he says, uh, he's about to order himself a drink. And you say no, um, Moise. Actually, you probably can't call him Moise. He would, would no, like I would. no, 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 uh, Mr. Mm. Mr. Mr. Moise. What drink would you buy him? Oh, no. Can't say bitter. <laughs> I think a Red Bull. The team liven them up a bit. Uh, he likes that. He likes the Red Bull model. Perry, yeah. to be fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. Something to give him a bit of a boost. Or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, need a bit of a boost at the moment. Uh, Perry, we'll get on to Moyes in just a second. But firstly, but, about you, how did you become a hammer? How did I become a hammer? Well, just I mean, it's just it's this family one. It's I was born in Custom House, E16. Um, my dad was a hammer, he still is. My granddad was, his father was. It's just it's just no choice in the matter. Absolutely no choice in the matter. But I mean, luckily, you know, I, I you know. I love football from a really early age, um, and that was that was it. It still happens to this day. There's a new baby born in the family. The very first thing that you do is go to a club, shop or whatever, get their name on the back of a West Ham shirt. It's just like claiming, <laughs> claiming as a new generation, new breed of hammer. So, and it's just, it just always has been, so it always will be. You know, it's kind of like, um, I, I, you know. I see sometimes now I find it frustrating and whatever when you sort of see when I still lived in the East End, which wasn't that long ago, I'd be on a bus or something, and I'd look across at a park and you'd see a load of kids playing football. And there'd you know, it'd be like maybe one West Ham shirt. Loads of Man United, loads of Chelsea. Barcelona, PSG these days. Well, yeah, all of that, you know, and it used to really annoy me because it was kind of you know, it's a silly thing, but you know, it's your area. It was, you know, that's all to do with it. And I had to sound all Phil Mitchell or East Enders, but, you know, it's all about family and all that sort of stuff and whatever. But it kind of was, it is, you know. It's sort of like, how can you... I can't I can't deal with anybody who's like a Cockney Red or anything like that. You know, like, they're kind of, you know, like, it's just sometimes, you know, you, you, you meet someone and... You, well, the first thing, first thing is a rule. Always remember this, fellas. You talk, if you meet someone and you go, what football team do you support? And they go, oh, I haven't got a team. Right, jog on. Right. <laughs> Ever going to be your mate for life. Simple as that. How can you not at least follow a team like football? And, no, I prefer rugby. Go. Go now. <laughs> right. um, another one is when they go, they go yeah, I support, uh, I support Liverpool. You go, right, and where were you born then? You know, uh, uh, Primrose Hill. Oh, Primrose Hill. Right next to Anfield. Is that what you're talking about? Is no, 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 from O.C. London. Well, what are you doing? You know, you, you've got to, you know, there's, you, you live in a, a city with, what, how many London clubs? 
you only follow them because of the success and stuff, you know. So that gets my goat a bit. I'm very proud to be a West Ham fan. Happy dude. Is that power pods behind you on your shelf? Or yes. in the, who is it? Yes. I've not seen power pods for years. I was um <laughs> you know they're at the shelf above you. Oh. In front of Moo. What's that? Is that a power pod? That little figure? Ah. Yeah, is it No, that's a thing that my my missus had made for me. You never pick it up on this camera. But it's a beauty yeah. Can you oh. challenge it? Oh, hey, Please. move it in front of you. Yeah, go. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. It looks a beauty over there, but if I turn him round, she had him paint on it. A number six, Captain's armband, and it actually says Fennec on it. So they haven't retired the number six shirt? <laughs> Only for me, in Sabutia. Quite right. <laughs> <laughs> go on. Hey. Well, there you go. I put a few little collectibles up there. Dude. I've got a big cabinet next door. Well, yeah, nice. Big... Strategically placed for the for the podcast. Yeah, yeah. I see. Yeah. Okay. To be honest with you, I mean, it's not quite John Terry, but um, I, I, I even did that thing last night, Gonzo, of picking out some really trendy books. <laughs> well, <laughs> people watching, they casually just go, "Oh, he's read Proust." Absolutely, yeah, we're well, very, very educated, we can see. So, I mean, as you can see, I've reciprocated, because just yeah. over there, you can see that's Barbara Wins, that's Peggy Mitchell. No, is it? No, it's not, it's Dolly Parton, but uh, <laughs> it, from a distance, it'll do. I've got, Gonzo, I've got in the garage, uh, I've got um, I've got EastEnders pinball machine. No, oh, you haven't. EastEnders fruit machine. I was going to say, like, oh, yeah, the, the pinball, the like, like the very small pinball community would have gone into meltdown there. That, yeah. that, because everyone thinks they know about every pinball machine. You've got an EastEnders fruit machine, have you? EastEnders fruit machine, and if you hit certain things, it's got like dot cotton goes. Oh, I say, <laughs> <laughs> my my Nick. Another one just goes leaving it up, but <laughs> <laughs> mate of mine. I was working in an old pub um, and it was in the cellar there and he said to me, he said, you've got to have it. He, went, he said, the geezer wants hundred pound for it or whatever. And I said, yeah, yeah, you've got to do it, and you, you know. So it sits out there and every now and again when people come around with a party or something, you leave it out, Frank. <laughs> Does it, has it got a Babs on that's head? Oh, Frank! No, no, this, no. I mean, the thing about it, it's really old. It's kind of like, I reckon it's sort of early 90s, maybe. So, but, but I don't think Barbara joined until about 94. Bit of Dr. Leg on there? He was quite quiet anyway, though, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. You know, he didn't have a lot. Yeah. <laughs> go on, Gio, after you. Um, well, I'll, well, I'll, 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 I'll go off on a tangent then, I'll tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's all right, we do all the time. While we're on the EastEnders theme then, hmm. Danny Dyer. Yes. Have you, have you, I assume you speak to him about West Ham. Have you ever sung the Jared Bowen song to him yet? <laughs> no. You haven't. It's it's not, like, not even just the first bit, which is Bowen's no. on fire and just leave it there. He came up to me a, a few months back or whatever. And uh, I said, did you go over there yesterday? He went, yeah, yeah, yeah. He went, oh, fuck him doing that song. You know? <laughs> and I went, what song's that then? <laughs> And he knew the words, you know. And he went, I, and he said, "Look, Danny's sitting there." Like he's talking. <laughs> and he said, "You've got to sit there and just go, yeah, yeah, okay, <laughs> and whatever." He went, "But it's wrong." <laughs> it is. It is wrong. If it's your daughter, it's definitely wrong. There's no doubt about it. I went with my dad once as well. We we we, we and dad all day all the time, sort of thing, and. Uh, they start. I got clocked over there, and the fans started chanting. What was it? He shags who he wants. He shags who he wants. Billy Mitchell. He shags what he wants. And my dad is a bit mutton, and he went, "You do what?" <laughs> <laughs> right, Dad. They're just saying. <laughs> Funny. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love. <laughs> he, said, he went. He said, um, "He went. Jared's coming round for dinner on Sunday." I went, don't you give him no dessert? <laughs> it's like, you've got to look after him. Yeah. No, no, he does. He, 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 be fair, he brings his own dinner with him. Uh, all that. And uh, But we've been kind of like, sort of, in our own way, like nurturing uncles to him. And I went, are you, are you telling Danny? 
but his daughter, and it's like, get, get up that aisle with him. Get married, you know, and even, oh, no, 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 great, wouldn't it? Let's stand set forward as we slam in love. <laughs> but, yeah, it's all good and whatever. He said he's a lovely bloke, Jared. Oh, but he's a oh, big, nice guy, you know. I love, I love the idea of the dyers all sitting down and then, right, fish and chips, there's your fish and chips, and your adding yeah. and chips, you've got the cod and chips. Yo, you, yeah. you, you, want, you want a bit of red sauce with that? Yeah, of course you go. Uh, Jared, you, you brought your salad, mate. <laughs> yeah, you know what yes, Jared does, I bought me lunchbox. Little, little, little plastic box with a mm. little plastic you, got, you, got your kale you, smoothie. Yeah. Do you know what yeah, Jared, what lunch Jared does, Ben? Because there's no way, right? Some If Gonza said to me, oh... My daughter's boyfriend's coming round and he brings his own lunch. My first question would be, well, what is the lunch? Why for him to bring it, what is he eating? Do you do you have any idea what Jared actually takes with him? I've got no idea. I suppose I mean he, you know, I think we've all learned about his fitness and stuff. And it was you know, and he, he strikes me as somebody who's like that's it's my body is my temple type things, you know what I mean? And um and good good on him. For it. Yeah, I mean, that summer where he came back and they said he was pulling tractor wheels across a farm in Herefordshire and whatever, and you know, and just came back, you know, 10 times sharper than anyone else. I like that. I like that in a play. That's the sort of Billy Bonds thing that he would have done, or Julian Dix would have just pulled a lorry with his teeth. You know what I mean? It, that, on a bit of rope, sort of like world yeah. man and whatever. Not enough of that. You know? <laughs> Did you have you asked Danny what's going on with Jared this season? Have you not uh, accused him of saying, Are you making him eat Sunday lunch or something? Because something's no, not working at the minute. I mean, collectively, between, we're, we're just sort of letting him work it out himself. <laughs> it's like no pressure or anything like that. Obviously, if it carries on, we're going to kick up the jacksie in January. But... <laughs> I think you should, you should try the fish and chips, to be fair. I think the salad's not working. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't know, but maybe it's, 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 I'm hoping this little gap that we're in at the moment might kind of liven them all up. But, For but a lot of them, what, mate. Yeah, what do you make of the season so far then, Perry? It's disappointing, boys, disappointing. I'm, 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 I'm kind of worried, I'm starting to get worried about the way we're coming out to have a game of football, especially at home. Um, I mean, I I. I first went to West Ham in 1969. I am old. I'm Jurassic. But I see all those teams through the 70s, 80s, 90s, whatever. Um, <clears throat> and there used to be a thing. I mean, I know it's not just a stadium change, but my old man always used to say, you know, like, you know, say, what do you reckon today? You, you know, fancies today. And the same was always, depends how they come out of the traps. You know, if they come out, and go for the jugular straight away and they press and attack and the crowd immediately is they're excited and there's a surge about it. And you put whoever you're playing, don't matter in Man City or down the bottom, you frighten the life out of them. Um, and you could tell the moment the referee blew the whistle, boom, how it would go. And it was fantastic, that excitement. That's what you're paying for. That's what you're at home. Like, Why? Well, yeah, you can be defensive. You can do those sorts of, you know, those things, you know, five across the back and, you know, what have you and soak it up. But to be doing that at home and to be doing it at home against teams that we should be battering is wrong. It's really wrong. And it's kind of like you're starting off for me on the back foot. And, you know, the way that sort of Moyes has said, you know, we're having to change the way we play because teams have found us out. Well, I don't. I think the only thing that's changed from what we were doing before, because we were playing, you know, off, off for the transition from, you know, like defending and then go out and bang up the other end. And we were scoring lots of goals, but those goals were from set pieces and corners, which is, that's not from open play. That's a very kind of, you know, that's a defensive manager sort of thing. We just happen to got really, get really good at it, and and I and I just don't understand why why are we not trying to just go for whoever we're playing, because it seems to me that we've been found out with that as well. It's like teams who turn up at us and just go, well, you know what they'll do, they'll sit back, so we'll push on, and it's that thing of like, and I think for for, for at the end of the day for entertainment watching football, watching your side, go and stick it to them. 
You know what I mean? At least if you, if you, you know, like you might go two, three nil up. I think that, you know, the last time that we might have done that was when, remember we had that run of games where we kept scoring three, but three nil, three nil, and then three nil up against Arsenal, and then, then they come back, and then we're three nil up against, was it Leicester or someone else, and they come back. But it was kind of, at least it was exciting. It was kind of, you know, bloody, you know, you get to half time, you think, could we get six or seven today? Now we're kind of one nil down at home against Wolves or someone like that. And, and you're, you're like, well, we're, now we're chasing the game against, in my opinion, an inferior team at home. So we have to take more chances to do that. And then it opens up at the back and they go up and, and nick a goal and stuff like that. And I, I, I kind of like, if you're going to try and change the way we play, why not give that an option, you know? Push on. Oh, that sounded a little bit hurt and bitter, didn't it? No, uh, no, 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 no. It's no. music to this one's ears, bloody yeah. hell. It's true, it's, it's true. It's, it's about entertainment's massively important, as I've said on numerous occasions. When he's, you, want, you want to fill that stadium up. You want to... <laughs> Keep people going. You you want to get you know it's it was well, it was always going to be based on a bit of entertainment. I thought you made a brilliant point the other day, Gonzo, when you said about like um, you know, is either of you said it? But if if we were to go down that stadium, that would just be ridiculous. It would be kind of it would be half full at yeah, best, and that would be odd after all these you know these full houses and stuff like that. But at the same time as well, it'd be like. It'd be like going to Wembley for all the other teams. Yeah. I'm down and wow, it's fantastic. Look at this pitch and everything like that. And it's it's kind of we we've got to be careful there. I don't think we will go down. But you know, it's it's needs it needs to be sorted very, very quickly. What about the manager then, Perry? Because obviously, um, as you'll have seen with our videos and West Ham fans, hot topic it's still the hot topic, uh, despite the World Cup going on, but it is sort of Moise in, Moise out debate and stuff. What's yeah. your thoughts on David Moyes to keep it very generic? Yeah, no, I kind of um, um, listen. He's done brilliant for us, no, no doubt about that. He, he he really has. And at the moment, I still see this as a blip. It's you know we 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 we've battered Manchester United this season. We've battered Chelsea. We've battered Tottenham. We've battered Liverpool. You know what I mean? We've had a lot of bad luck against us. The ones that roll me are the ones where we seem to have rolled over. Um, you know, your Brightons and things, you know, like those sort of things, because I, I just sit there, those performances have been kind of apathetic, and I don't, I don't understand that side of it. We smash through Europe again, all right. I know it ain't the same deal and stuff like that, but it's a pretty impressive record in Europe to be in Europe for two years running. Yep. So, there's, there's a hell of a lot that you know, it was, you know, it was only a year ago, it was in Moyes We Trust and this and that, and you know. We're massive and stuff like that. Well, yeah, okay, but you know, we can have that. we can have that again. But my thing with with him at the moment is it's just like right. Well, look, like I said before, you tried this, you tried that. Do, 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 do. You know, I, I'm a big advocate of two up front, I, and especially you know just because of old West Ham history. Mm. Uh, we used to have some great double acts up front. And I've always liked that. I don't know why. It's like these teams who tre tend to follow a trend. Uh, oh, they're playing like that. They're only playing. They're playing with a false number. Nine. What's a bloody false number nine? I can't stand a false number ten. We'll, 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 we'll just take number ten out of the team then and put in 13. number twelve. It's, it's just it's bollocks. All that talk. It really is. It's kind of like you know, play two up front. McAvenny, Cotty, you know, like it's, you know, it's not, if you break it right down, it's not that difficult a game to work out how to play it. And, and I think this constant changing around, and, you know, oh, we're playing so and so today. So we won't play in a, in a, a way that we've been quite successful with. Do you know what I mean? It's like back in the day, the t it was like that's the way West Ham played. And if the opposition can't deal with it, tough. You know, it's, 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 it, I think there's too much sort of bowing to pressure and, and, and sort of going, you know, like it's a bit like Man City. It's, it's kind of just like when you're going to go and play them, oh, well, we're never going to win anyway. You know, so let's give up before we've even, you know, before we've even got on the coach. 
and that and that sort of thing I, I can't stand that it's like look at that result this morning saudi arabia two argentina one i mean that for me that's that's lifted this whole world cup it was great england yesterday don't get me wrong but what a result for all the rest of the teams who haven't played there yet they haven't played a game or they might have played and lost that's the sort of thing that ruffles the feathers of everything is to actually just go blimey they did that they had a go maybe we could do do you, do you know what i mean as opposed yeah. to being just like there you go on your way quarter final semi-final and stuff like that. i love stuff like that I'm, and that, you know if you're a west ham fan you've always been a fan of giant killer apart from Hereford united <laughs> Gonzo, um, I, I actually just going back to Moyes a second because this is I, I agree with well I agree with everything that you said there. I think he's done a tremendous job for us. I think all of that stuff, what, what you said about Europe was I think is is really key actually. Actually, quite qualifying for Europe two seasons in a row is is actually more impressive than than actually us sailing through the groups both times because to qualify for two years in the Premier League you're playing against such a high standard of the team. So I do think he's done yeah. really, really well. And obviously, once we've been in the competition, uh, there's there's lots to go for. It. Um, I also believe that he has the capacity to turn it round. But I do believe we're at a, like, a real pivotal stage now for all the, all the you know, don't need to repeat myself on, on in terms of if we go down and whatnot. But this is a really crucial time with the break because of the World Cup. Absolutely, yeah. I, I'm looking for, and I, I want him to turn it around. I'd rather us not sack another man, a second manager and go for all that because I do think there's uncertainty. So I want Moyes to turn it round. But for that reason, when it does resume, I'm looking for sort of some new ideas. I'm looking for the players to look fresh and interested. I'm looking for him to look like he's got a way where he can incorporate new players who suck. Some of them started well, and, that, and so all the former the new signings have got worse. Um, it's like their heads have gone down, isn't it? It's, yeah, it is. So I guess my question is: do, do first of all, do you agree that the first, the next three or four games are pivotal for David Moyes' future? I'm sure you do. And and are, do you think he can do it? Are you confident, or are you worried? Uh, I'm worried, but. I think he knows, you know, he's an honest geezer, as it were. And it's, you know, I, I think he must know exactly what you've just said. All of that, you know, you, you, you know, this is a time to, we don't normally get this in football seasons. It's a, it's a pause, really, to just go, you know, you, you don't take stock. Normally what would be happening is we'd be, we'd, be, we'd be diving down the table and then over Christmas it's kind of sorted. If you ain't dug yourself out, you are in, the, you know. Yeah. Um, so this is unprecedented. So it's kind of like you should be using, he should be using this time for all those reasons that you said. And thinking, you know, like, right, well, what if I try this? Da, 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 da. Maybe getting to know the new players a bit more. Um, and, and I, I, you know, I, I do think as well, I'm, there's, there's a worry, with Moyes, but I do worry about the people that were losing from the academy. Who, yeah. Yeah, and people we'll say, oh, you know, we got them for nothing. No, we didn't. We all paid towards their training for, for years, you know, and they come through and they're good players. And now they're starting to walk on their own. If they, you know, Sonny Perky, blah, 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 you know, you're not giving me a chance and whatever. And we're not Chelsea. We, we can't afford to lose De Bruyne and well they can't anymore no they can yeah. well but at uh, least they got money for it that, that's the difference between yeah. us. We're, you know they, they're selling these players they're selling Lukaku <laughs> they're selling De Bruyne these, these, these players have trained West Ham blah 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 the West Ham way and all this stuff and personally I don't think they should have ever got rid of Tony Clark I think that was a disgrace whatever went on there um but that's that's a worrying thing because you know that those players are starting to look at it and just go well i'm never going to get a chance here so you know i might as well you know you only get one career i want to play football um so we, we you know you need to look after them and that was great that european game where we blooded all those players and whatever and and it was not really good to see but don't then lose them you know don't give them a game and just go here you go now sit back down there for another year there were times last season when, you know, Antonio couldn't, you know, 
cook me a cow's ass type thing. Um, and, you know, we had a forward on the bench who would just, you know, not get, he must have been sitting there that point. Was it Otto Flex or I can't remember the name? There's Otto Flex, but also Sonny Perkins as well. Perkins must be sitting there just going, well, look, this is this is what you and West Ham, the academy, have taught me, you know, you've trained me, you've primed me to do this. And let me on there. Give, give me a go. And, but don't just give me 10 minutes at the end of the game. And if I don't score, <laughs> you know, that's it. That's your lot. Because tell me a forward who can do that. Well, apart from Harlan, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But do you know what I mean? That's, I think he's got, he's got to kind of maybe use it to, to, to properly get to know his players, to look at the different options, because it's... We were doing all right. We were doing all right. Um, and it's come as a bit of a shock, the fact that we are where we are um, and we're not. Like this time last year, what was we, top four? Something like that. Um, there's, there's, I, I, I fear that there's kind of a bit of anarchy in the camp, you know, like, and, and, and you know, it's the most distasteful part of football for me is... Also, when I'm not saying this is what's happening, but when you see, you know, you can see a manager get outed by players who just go, right, we had a plan for him, we don't want him, we'll get shot of him. I'm not saying that's going on, but equally, it's if there's stuff that's going wrong, then you have to kind of nip it in the bud. And I don't think it's too late to do that, you know. And I think, you know, we've got an FA Cup coming up, right? We always like a little go at that. We, we, we smashed that group. In Europe. People keep saying, oh, six games under it. It was eight wins out of yeah, eight. Yeah. And no one ever says that, and it annoys me, but eight wins out of eight rocked it, you know. And we've done, let's be honest with you, some of these teams were big teams at a certain point, and whatever. Some of them are completely up and none. But they're all unknown to us. You know, it's kind of like, you don't, you don't know who, what they're going to be like, what their crowd's going to be like, and all that sort of stuff. And we've been, we've been brilliant in that. And oh, that's, uh, go, go, look at um, look at Saudi Arabia. That's that's yeah. the thing. You can you can trip up against these teams. You you can if if you're yeah. not on it. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I'd I'd hope that that you know the players. This, I mean, it's an interesting thing that someone was saying on the radio today about how and in England. I thought England were brilliant last night. Yes, we we shit two goals. But the point what someone was making on the radio was it's because they're in peak form. At the moment, we've never had it before. You know, when we've played in, in World Cups in the summer, there's a month off and then they did it and whatever. And it's sort of, they're knackered. You remember, they, they, you've got to think they've had like 40, 50 games before they even start a competition. And and this, you know, so you, you conversely, you turn it on its head and you just go, right, well, you lot, I've got a nice little break, but you need to get that ankle sorted. You need to do that. You need to work on this. We need to work on that um, because we are better than this. We we are much better than this. And let's face it, there's you know, two win two wins and suddenly you're twelfth. It's not that part yet, although coming back and playing Arsenal first thing. But then we could do it Saudi Arabia. You know, you know, like it's like that would put whatever I'm trying to mix up <laughs> put something in the nest. <laughs> um Perry, do you um it's always seemed Really hard work, um, soaps, mm. for, for a, a program that goes out almost every day. Yeah. Um, I, it's got to be a lot of recording. It's, it's got to be. It, it just looks like bloody hard work, quite frankly. Do you get? How does it work? Do you get much time for the football? Do you get weekends off? I take it. Do you, do you film two or three episodes in a, in a day? I know not everyone is in every episode, but do you get? Do you get much time for the football? Basically, uh, it, it varies. It's, it's kind of like it's always very last minute to be honest with you, because it's, the, the, the schedule changes constantly. I mean, the, the way it kind of works is that we basically, we're always filming eight episodes at the same time. Okay. And those eight episodes, like today, I was filming for stuff that you won't see until mid-February. That's how far ahead we are. Um, but eight episodes every 10 days. So that's that's... That's it. No. Yeah, I am. Eight episodes every 10 days or something. If you think your average feature film was about 100 minutes, yeah, 
Yeah. But one episode of EastEnders is 28 minutes. So just re- roughing it off. We're making the equivalent of sort of two and a half to three feature films every 11 days in terms of time. So it's, it is, you know, it's a big turnover. It's very, very fast. It's like jumping on a, on a roundabout and you either stay on it or you fall off. You know, that's kind of like, it's, it's, you, 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 you know, you've got to know your stuff. You've got, well, you've you've got, got to learn your lines quickly, you've haven't you? Got, you've got to learn, I know you've got to learn them quickly, but you've got to forget them straight away. Put more <laughs> new words in there. It's the, that's the only thing. I love my job and I love being an actor. But the only thing that it just takes you back to school is it's like homework. Um, you could do a fantastic day's filming and think, yeah, smashed it out of the park there. Drive home, my time you drive home, you have something to eat, and then you're just like, right, <laughs> and tomorrow. <laughs> you know? sure. um, and it's, you know, it can, it can be all consuming like that, but they kind of tend to schedule it in a way that if you've been exceptionally busy, the storyline, you know, like your storyline will sort of drop down there and then another one comes up and uh, that, that. so, you know, that you don't burn out, as it were. I don't, I don't think, you know, I don't think if, you, if you have too much of that, I think it, it doesn't get to a point. I've had it myself and I've seen it with some actors where you, they're just walking around with springs coming out of there. I bet. <laughs> Ooh, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. But it's not digging an hole in the road either, is it? It's kind of... It's 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 a it's it's a nice job. It's kind of yeah, but it's time consuming. It looks like yeah, it would be it, time consuming. And going back to what you said as well, it's, it's in terms of getting over the hammers and stuff like that, it's it's I can arrange to go and do that, and then the moment that I've arranged to do it, I'll say, "Oh, you're in on Saturday now." You know, it's that sort of thing. Their their first call on you, um, but you know, I I get to see enough, and I you know, I can, you know, if if. If I don't get over there, then it's on the box and stuff like that sort of thing. But I found myself the other week though, because I don't have any of that sticks, thick fire sticks, and me or whatever. Well, no, no, nobody has any of that stuff. No, I know they don't. I've heard about these things. Yeah, I thought that, that it was something to do with bonfire or whatever. But, um, but no, I found myself in a ridiculous situation the other day. You two commented on it on the channel where you were just like, "This game is not taking place." Do you remember, was it Southampton? Or I, can't remember. I think it might have been Blackburn. Blackburn, where there was no, no one was filming it. Yeah. So there was, ne- it's never even going to be seen. And it was only available on Radio Lancaster. <laughs> Lancaster, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I found myself, you know, I was upstairs tuning the radio. And I just thought, I'm in an episode of Dad's Army here. It's kind of like, <laughs> we're in 2022. And I'm fiddling around. <laughs> this old radio guy. London calling, London calling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would tell him his personality. I should have. <laughs> it was just funny. Yeah, you, you, I know you're angling for a new... Listen, all I can take from that, you're either angling for a fire stick or a new radio for Christmas. That's all right. You're not, you're not the only one in that room, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, let's. I mean, I just hope what we were saying before about noise and stuff. It, it's a brilliant opportunity, which you know we should grab it by the horns, you know, and and kind of like uh, that, that's going to be the thing. We come out of the traps against Arsenal the way that we used to in games, you know. Just just throw, throw caution to win, go for it. You when you said one of you said the other day about Bielsa and stuff. It's like there's something to be said for that. Of like, you know, can you imagine Arsenal top of the league, Boxing Day, and blah blah blah. The World Cup, wherever that's gone, and the referee blows the whistle, and West Ham whoosh, and they go, "Whoa, what happened?" Yeah. They were supposed to sit back. We were supposed to, you know, press them and whatever, and and just like, <laughs> I would love that. I, I'd I'd love to see that. He might even play a false nine for you, pal. Oh, well, yeah, <laughs> you'd really like that, wouldn't you? <laughs> what is the false nine? Um, it's it's essentially, uh, yeah, probably. I, I would I would probably describe it as a striker that plays a little bit deeper than a usual striker, and is usually a bit more of a, a harder worker, more of a flair player in there rather than a finisher per se. It might not be the polished striker 
it's somebody that's more involved in the creative aspect rather than the finishing aspect. That's how I would describe it. And usually they're pretty key. If you look around the Premier League in recent years, I would suggest Firmino is probably the best example. When you look at the way Liverpool play, I, I would probably describe him to some extent as a false nine. And he was used to get the best out of Salah and Mane. And if you take Firmino out, does Salah and Mane play as well? You would put a proper striker in there. I would argue not. So sometimes it does work. And I think, if you, funnily enough, you look at Arsenal, I think they're still sort of playing with one a little bit, which is just up front. He's not really a... If if, they, if a team is openly playing with a false nine, see, I thought it was like some sort of secretive team <laughs> code. That's, that's a, that's a, that's a we, secret. That's a secret yeah, number nine. You're confusing it. If everybody knows, if someone says, yeah, we're going to play with a false nine today. <laughs> <laughs> you go, right, he's going to do that. Do, 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 do for me, you know, yeah. Got him, mark him, good. <laughs> I, I remember the first ever time I saw it was um, was for, for Spain when they rocked up. I think it was the Euros when they won it. I think uh, Fabregas played as a false nine, and everybody was like, "What are they doing? They don't even have a striker." Uh, before the game, oh, they, right. they were trying to do the graphics and stuff. They were like, "Well, how's this working? Who's playing striker?" And they were admin. That's obviously someone's got to be the striker. So they were like, yeah. well, who's going to be the striker today? And they, they couldn't work out with Iniesta, Xavi in there. And they were like, well, what's going on? And then when they took kickoff and that Fabregas was the furthest forward and thought, Fabregas is striker. And then that's when they sort of questioned it. And then they sort of realised that he was playing as a false nine. And I, that's my first memory of the, the false nine anyway. But I think it works when you've got a world-class player like Cesc Fabregas pulling the strings rather than somebody that's perhaps not so good at or it. Or Clinton Morrison. Clinton Morrison, oh, Clinton Morrison, Ravel Morrison. Yes, Ravel. Yeah, he, yeah, he, of course. He played, he played as your um, your full snub. Well, lines, he he? everything, wasn't he? Was, yeah. Vlasic yeah, yeah. played a couple of times for Torino. Um, he's played the the false nine role uh, for Torino for a couple of times while he's been on loan. Um, anyway, uh, pal. Speaking of dodgy radios and fire sticks, uh, Gonzo. What about dodgy? What? what, what are you... uh, uh, Walford Market. Would you like me to? Speak oh, you? oh, sorry, I thought. You... <laughs> So You're normally a little bit quicker saying, than don't that. Tell me, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hook him up live on the show. My goodness <laughs> sake! Right, at least wait until, you know, wait until later. But he's stitching me right up here. No, I don't know anything about such things. However, um, <laughs> it's thirty-five quid. But I don't know about it. Uh, however, however, if there was no, 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 no. Um, I, I have often wondered uh, about Wolf of Market and about the writers. So Wolf of Market, uh, sort of has got the reputation as the murder capital of the um of the world of London, right? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just delighted you're here. I was expecting you to get killed <laughs> off, you know, in, in the last couple of days. Um, however, there's a there's a contradiction there. So this is like vortex. You get to the market. The market's the most honest place ever because well, so well, first of all, any half and half scarfs on the market. But secondly, why is it? Why is it? I find this absolutely amazing that someone has, it's been happening for years. Pauline on the stall or whatever. She, you know, I mind the stall for us, and she'll. <laughs> She'd bugger off to the calf, right? And there you are. So you've got all these murderers in there and just these people handing out pouches of money. There you go. Might have stole for us. There you go. And they strap it around their waist. There you, there you are. You know, good few hundred quid there, I'm guessing. Um, but it's, it, it, is, it is the most villainous place in the world, but also the most, most trustworthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it is that, is it? It's, it's, we laugh about it. Hey, oh, do you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the, other, the other thing about my stall at the moment is it's kind of like, it's all sort of, basically, he's doing house clearing, so it's a load of old talk, really. Um, but nothing ever gets bought. <laughs> but, or uh, stolen. I'm a, or, well, no one wants to steal it anyway. But, yeah, you have to kind of, from a, from a, a the real reason for that is, it's kind of what I said before, it's, you, you know, if you were to actually tell the viewers in the show, if I said, Martin, yeah, Mark, yeah, there's me thing there, do you know? Can you mind me still? Because I've got to go off to the other unit. I'm filming the episode after this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Over there. And I'll be back. When I film that, I'll come back and you can go <laughs> film your scene over there and I'll mind you still for that. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, right. But it only extends <laughs> to those businesses. Why is everyone saying, "Oh, mind the Vic for us, mind the calf, oh, mind, yeah. the, mind the Lord Dret for us"? Um, my, my favourite one is is the fact that uh, the character of Max Brannan, um, who to lose one child from <laughs> falling off the top of the Vic, was Bradley. Was Bradley was the yeah? yeah. But to lose three of them, 
falling off the top of the Vic. That's careless. That's that's wrong. And then to the Vic every day for a pint, where, where your three children have succumbed to the pavements of Walford. <laughs> That a little bit much. It's resilience. It's resilience, isn't it? He did, isn't he? Do you my... know? Um, you, sorry, before you go, do you know? Um, you know, obviously, Adam is uh, does. Do you know he does greetings messages, birthday messages on Cameo? Did you know that? No. Do you know what Cameo is? I, I think I've heard about it. You, okay. You, well, you, Cam, you... Cam, little sideline for you there. Um, Who's Adam? Would you? Ian Bill. Oh, um, okay, okay. Thank you. Oh, Thank sorry, you. sorry, sorry, sorry. It's, it's been around for so so bloody long. So cameo is something where celebrities such as yourself, um, yeah. there's there's a number of these websites. And so if I if I wanted, um, well, to be fair, I hope now you just wish me happy birthday. So hopefully I don't have to pay for the privilege. But if we didn't if we didn't know one another, and then yeah. it was my birthday, and I would sign in, and I would say I want Perry Fennick in the style of Billy Mitchell to wish me a happy birthday. And then what you'd do is on your mobile phone, you'd record a little 30 second clip saying, uh, Gonzo, your sister's sent me, uh, told me it's your birthday. I want to wish you a very, very happy birthday from here and everyone in, in the fix. Anyway, and it's it's a little, it's a little thing. Yes. Yeah. So um, I was on there recently um, and, um, and I just, I know he's got a sneaky sideline. Adam Woodjet's on there, basically. A um, little, little sneaky sideline wishing people happy birthday. It sounds almost like a sort of, Fans only sort of website or whatever. No, no, it's it's, it's any it's anyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, it's that it's that with suspect. Um, yes, yeah. I, I went yeah. on there to try and find a geezer from um, Back to the Future to do one for my daughter. And I'm like, hold on, it was it was so you had all these Hollywood all these Hollywood stars on there, the people from Ghostbusters and all the Hollywood stars on him. Is he and Beale? <laughs> What's the guy that was on X Factor with Big Hair? He sang Love Shack. He was really crap, but he was just funny. And he made it quite far in X Factor just because of how terrible he was. I remember he sang Love Shack. I can't remember his name now. Um, yeah. Someone someone got him to do a West Ham one. I think he's, he, he made a joke about Tottenham being rubbish and was like, come on, you right hands. <laughs> oh. So you, you can pay anyone to say anything on those websites. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can. I yeah. know who you mean. That weird geezer who used to be on Harry Hill as well. I can't, I can't remember his name now. It's yeah, annoying me. Really, know. really hairy, really hairy yeah. book. Um, <laughs> I'm going to find it and I'm going to put it in this. I'm going to edit into this video so the people at home end, know end, one more. Ends the ends the video. End the video. Yeah, end, um, it'll be at the end of the video. Um, Perry, on on now. Uh, I I remember tuning into his stand and I haven't watched it for years, but um, we 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 saw we saw sort of gave you a pull of shirt and said, <laughs> well, we appreciate him. <laughs> oh, massively. <laughs> Go on, so make my video for me. I'm off to the That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the novelty ran off with my mum years ago, anyway. So, <laughs> well, I, uh, so we gave you a polo shirt and said, You're wearing this, will you? And okay. said, yeah. So I remember you saying it'll be on this week. It was on the flipping Friday, so I had to sit through the other episodes on the week before I got to it. <laughs> but anyway, I put it on on the Friday. It was on in the background, and there was a scene from the market. And funny enough, it was that thing. I thought, surely in 2022, it must be a mime a card reader, will you? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but there was like an organic fruit and vegetable. I thought, what is this going on? Oh, but, but you could have one if you had a market stall, and you could have one West Ham player, the current squad, to come help you for a day. Who would you choose and why? Oh, current squad. Yeah. Ah, blimey. Uh, I, f I think um, Mikel Antonio, I think he could drum up a bit of business. Do he's you? Got, yeah, he's got a bit of patter about him, and he? he's not shy. I think, yeah, yeah, I, I quite like a day of him, have a, have a bit of giggle with him. I don't know, I'd sell out my old stuff, but whatever. But, um, but in the past, I would have had Julian Dix and Harry Redknapp. Harry, <laughs> I mean, half your money would go missing. Harry, you've sold everything. There's not much money left. My, my oh, I'm giving it to I'm Rosie. It's gone. <laughs> the stone's gone. <laughs> I'll give, it to, I'll give it to Rosie. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's it for a foreign player? <laughs> where's, where's me stole Harry? Oh, you know, he's in the Cayman Islands. Yeah, for sure, for sure. uh, yeah, Michael Antonio, mind me Lamborghini. Ah, oh, whoops. <laughs> yeah. We crashed the flipping thing into the stall on the way there. <laughs> yeah. uh, I've got a lovely penguin. snowman outfit to sell. <laughs> That's <them>. it, snowman. 
<laughs> who would you have gone so if you had a stall? Um, who would I had a current lineup? Um, I, I, it's Pablo Fernals for me, I think. Oh, he'd have to pass her, wouldn't he? Um, it 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 because he he can really speak well. Um, I think. Um, let me have a little. Downs would be good. He would. He would be good. I'm just trying to think of it from a um, from a different from a different angle. Um, I, I think probably Vladimir Souffal because I think what he'd do is he'd work really really long hours on the stock. He'd probably drop quite a lot of the stock. Oh, whoops! Oh, shut up. you know. But um, but I think he'd be a, he'd be an honest honest worker. Just um, a bit a bit clumsy. You no, no, no. that. Like, it's, it's like I wouldn't have to do any work at all. <laughs> well, oh, a Suchek. I'd have a potato salad stall. I go, hey, Thomas, mind the stall for us. Come back. Where's the stall? Um, <laughs> governor, I, I, have you, I have you done your fruit salad? <laughs> He's Russian. Might see it like that. Anyway, shall we leave you there, friends? Oh, loved it, mate. Loved yeah, it. I've, I've thoroughly Bye. enjoyed it. Perry, thank you so so much for joining us. Um, Will you yeah. come back at the uh, at the end of the season and join us on our relegation show, Perry? <laughs> I hope it's not called the relegation show, but yeah, we'll have, we'll have, well, it's like the old EastEnders, isn't it? Yeah, we're working eight episodes ahead of ourselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, someone will die on Christmas Day, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I will. No, I'd love to come back. It's been a real pleasure. Just it's been like having a party, isn't it? It, Thanks, you, mate. Uh, which we must do as well soon. I'd love to, mate. Love to. <laughs> we'll, we'll, right. we'll sort something in a bit. Hey, Perry, thank you very much. Gonzo, thank you as always. And you guys at home, thank you very much for joining us. If you've enjoyed this episode, you must have done because it's 45 minutes long. If you're still here, you've enjoyed the video or you're really bloody nosy and for some reason skip to the end. But please do drop a like on it by clicking the thumbs up button, subscribe to your damage chat. Myself and Gonzo, Perry at the end of the season. Myself and Gonzo, certainly. We'll see you in a bit. Oh, when the Spurs. Win Bugaro, oh when the Spurs win Bugaro, we're gonna party in East London. When the Spurs win Bugaro, come on you Ions!